What's up guys, it's Nutri and welcome back to our Football Impact video. What an incredible weekend has been in the Premier League, Bundesliga, Liga, La Liga, Syria, and many other leagues as well. But man, what a weekend has been. Man, oh man. Anyway, let's start off with the Premier League. And in the Premier League this weekend, some horrific, horrific defending is what I used this weekend. Starting off with Arsenal versus Liverpool. Now I'm going to make it right now. Liverpool were amazing, the best team. Their football right now is amazing to watch. Salah was phenomenal. Emery Chan and Ronaldo in the midfield along Henderson were unplayable at times. Also, if a man had a really good game, um, he scored a phenomenal goal. Uh, the second goal, the first goal was a great ball in from. I think it was Chan, phenomenal header from Firmino, that was 1-0, uh, well, then like I said, when Manny scored from a counter attack, 2-0, the second half he scored the third goal from Hans Salah, which was another counter attack goal, and yeah, enough about, you said, I'll come on to Arsenal in a minute, but phenomenal win for Liverpool, they are flying right now, and since they got into the Champions League, the momentum is just with them now, so yeah, phenomenal win, they deserve it, 4-0 win, they were amazing, amazing. Now let's move on to Arsenal. The only word I can come up with that from Arsenal was weak, disgraceful. They are those players are so bad. I put all of them in transfer right now. Big ten. Put them all in transfer list. Uh, they are bad. You can't tell me Arsenal Football Club are going in the right direction when your manager tells you in a post match press conference we're going in the right direction. Mate, you haven't been in the right direction for ten years. This is Arsenal. How the hell can you... This frustrates me so much about Arsenal. They play some great football, but we all know their weaknesses defensively. They probably need a new goalkeeper now, because Peter Cech, I think, they're coming to an end of his career right now. Midfield. I don't even know what that midfield was yesterday. Aaron Ramsey was so... I don't know what game he was playing yesterday. Grand Jack was doing back heels for corners. I was just... The miserable is the word I use. I don't even know what you use for performance. But yeah, they were fucking disgraceful. If, I, if my team played it, if, if new cash name playing that, I don't have a rant right now. But I get you Arsenal fans pain. For me, I said all along, I'm going to make short and sweet for this one. That club needs change. The board don't know what they're doing. And obviously, Arsene Wenger doesn't know what he's doing. I, felt, I said when they won the FA Cup, he should have left. Then, that, and I still make today say that for me Arsenal need change and need change immediately right now. So yeah, that's all that's that's enough say with Arsenal. Um humiliating defeat. But good Liverpool, best team won on, on the day. Chelsea went 2 0 against Everton. What a performance from Morata. I tell you one thing, Chelsea looks like they were a lot of player this season. Um, because Jay Costa has got looks like no future at Chelsea. Morata has stepped up, even though against Burnley lost uh, they were free now. He came on, scored a goal and got an assist, made the score a little bit respectable. And tell you one thing, Everton didn't have anything in this game. Apart that, I had a couple of late chances in, in, the, in the end of the game, but Chelsea were all over him. Fabregas and Way William was on the eve of yesterday. He was playing like Eden Hazard, if Eden Hazard was playing. Anyway, um, but the, the phenomenal performance yesterday from Chelsea. Morata, Fabregas, William, they all were amazing yesterday. and. You had to say, people say this Chelsea team, oh, they're going to win the league. They're way off the league. They're not going to win the league. The title. Well, they've been one game. They're right now. One, two, get back, back to back. They beat Tottenham away and also beat Everton. Two hard teams, by the way. It's not just formality wins for those two because Tottenham, you know, you don't want to play Tottenham. And also, Everton are a good side. So, two comfortable wins for them. I think they're going in the right direction. Conte wants to bring a couple more players for the transfer window closes. Yeah, Henry Dory, that's how things going alright for Chelsea. Man. As for Everton, they just, play, they just came up against a team that are right now red hot. And yeah, it feels sorry for Everton at times because they got a good point against Manchester City on Monday. And then, well, actually, won the game apart from you know, the late goal from Sterling. But I'll tell you what, give credit where credit's due. Everton look like a good team this season. If they bring in another striker, which they could be Dave Costa, that might be. It, 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 it get top four, but only get them closer to that spot. The team at the minute who can't stop winning and can't stop scoring goals and can't actually just destroy in the league right now are Manchester United, who beat Leicester 2 0. Um, not from Mandy, one for them, because you had a good credit to credits due. Leicester had a game plan, you know, uh, 
for straight Manchester United for 75 minutes, then go on the counter and try and get a league goal or something like that. So, so I get credit to Craig Shaper, he is starting to really, I'm, I'm starting to, he's starting to grow on me, the manager at the minute, but uh, the penalty was a penalty to hit off Danny Simpson's arm. You could say, well, is it, is it, is it, is it indirect, is it, is it an actual, is it like ball of hand or is it a penalty? I think it was a penalty. And the man you think, oh, he's going to score, he's going to be the first Manchester United player to ever score in his debut, four free goals, he misses it. He really doesn't like scoring on the other side. He only goes one right, doesn't he? He only goes left. He doesn't go right, for whatever reason, Lukaku. Uh, but great save from, from Castro Schmeichel. Phenomenal save. Then, my name put some juice on, they put Rashford on and Fellaini on. Rashford came on and he was unbelievable. The ball in from Mkhitaryan from the corner was absolutely ridiculous. Rashford hits that ball first time in the back of the net. You could say Cash Spanger should save it. I don't think so. I think Indeedy, who's supposed to be marking him, should pick his man. Anyway, they brought Fellaini on. The goal was offside for Fellaini, but again, it all came from Rashford. He was set the second half, he freaking was amazing when he came on. And good goal from Fellaini. It was offside, but yeah. It's a, it's a very difficult one for the referee to see because the Man United player is in the way. Um, but 2 0 win, Man United are going right now. Everything's fine, everything's great. Mourinho's happy again. I never to see Mourinho happy again, mad. But yeah, uh, the happy one is happy again. Man United, top of the league, no goals conceded, 10 goals scored. Everything couldn't go swell for Man United. Man City win against Bournemouth 2 1. This game had everything. What a game this was. Um, the first goal from Daniels, which probably wins my goal of the month award. My goodness me, what a finish from Daniels. Then, uh, Man City got momentum in the game. Uh, the goal from Man City from Gabriel Jesus. It was a really good finish from, the, from, the, from Gabriel Jesus. And I know everybody's saying, if Aguero didn't start the game, he's on the bench. Does that mean a lot of frustration at that team? But I mean, credit with credit to a really good... Uh, win a really good goal from Gabriel Jesus. Then Nathan Ake should have been sent off for a straight red card, in my opinion. And uh, you also have to put in what about uh, there should be a red card. It should have been a straight red card. And also you could say should should Cook got a straight red card for his time on Gabriel Jesus? Maybe, maybe. And yeah, the second half, Man City were all the ball, all the possession. Uh, Bournemouth had two amazing chances. Joshua King hit the post, and then our massive chance in the end for Bournemouth. They should have done better with. And then the drama came. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the, free, the last minute of the main, the two after, the two managers, Pep Guardiola and Eddie Howe, having them fall out saying, "Oh, it should be it should be four out of minutes, then it's five out of minutes, and it's it just how hectic in this touch line." Then you go on the field where the last thirty seconds of the game. Bournemouth should have had a free kick. Watch it. Man City should have had a free kick because it wasn't a free, it wasn't a foul. And then uh, Vincent Company with a quick free kick puts it in, puts it in, puts it in, puts it so good, passes them. Then the ball in for Cameron Bryan in the Dallas Silva. Ryan Sterling scores a really interesting finish. I question the goal from I think he should have put a. Yeah, well, he still scored it. He scored two and two. Because that's better for the game, but. Yeah, interesting finish, but in the net, 2-1, it all went off, Man City fans pour onto the pitch, Man City players all celebrated. It was like Man City won the Premier League title at the last, like that, it was freaking ridiculous. But anyway, 2-1, then the referee, Mike Dean, decides, you know what, you're off mate. I just don't get that. I don't get, is, can you not celebrate a goal anymore? Can you not celebrate a goal? I mean, fuck's sake! It's I get why he sent up because of the you know the players on the pitch, the players going to the fans, the fans were on the pitch. I get it for safety, but can you not celebrate a goal anymore? I mean, for fuck's sake! Give me a break. You know, anyway. But look, like I said, great win for Man City. Certainly looks like he, he's going to be suspended for the next game. But to take off away, Bournemouth should have got a point from the game. They were phenomenal. Apart from conceding the goal in the last minute, I thought they played really well. And anyhow, I know he's not having a great start to the Premier League this season, but I just think there's only a matter of time for me to pick up points. As for City, that game may win in the league. That's her big of a goal, that is, for Man City this 
I know we've only played three games, that's a massive goal. Uh, if you come if you come down to two points or three points to win the league title, that performance won in the league. So yeah, big win for City. Newcastle beat thrashed West Ham 3-0. The only word I can say for this performance is West Ham were that bad, they looked like a relegation team. Because took them away, Newcastle were phenomenal, they played some really high pressing. They they were the they were in their faces from the first minute. Rafa obviously, Rafa obviously had that team well set to win the game, but West Ham looked way off big time. I mean, they were shocking. I don't even know what system they were playing half time. I, I, you look at West Ham and you think to yourself, were they playing three at the back or four at the back? I don't even know what they were playing. Zabaleta, I, you know, I'm not realizing why the West Ham buy him. Uh, they, they changed the defence again, I understand Reed's injured, but no Fonte, but in Collins, and the guy who I've never heard of, it doesn't get any sense of West Ham. I, I know that's not in place under massive pressure, but the fact is, West Ham, I tipped West Ham to get a draw in this game against Newcastle, but I didn't think Newcastle would whip the floor from 3 0. But anyway, uh, Newcastle were phenomenal, the goal from Hostel, his first ever goal from Newcastle, I'm happy for that. Happy with that. Um, then uh, Kieran Clark in the second half put a long believable ball from Richie head into Kieran Clark. The third goal, the only word I can say is a uh, 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 work horrific offside. Uh, I don't know what they're trying to do an offside offside trap. The only word I can say. And then Mitrovic goes around to Joe Hart three 0 comfortable win. Newcastle get the first win back in the Premier League. West Ham big big problems big problems. If they don't get these problems sorted. They could be in a relegation fight this season. Huddersfield drew 0-0 against Southampton. The only thing I can say about this game is Huddersfield are still unbeaten. That's right, after three games, I'm still trying to say that to my head. Huddersfield are still unbeaten. Southampton didn't play well in this game. They had chances, but they're all half chances. Huddersfield, good point for them. And yeah, they're still sad. I can't believe there's just seven points in three games. Man. Topham won, Burnley won. And Topham's Wembley hoodoo continues, man. They won, they're actually leading this game for Delhi Alley. But I want to just... Take a moment to say, Deli Ali didn't celebrate. Now, I'm not going to read on it to him, I mean, just didn't feel like celebrating, but for me, something isn't right at top. When a player doesn't celebrate a goal, I just find that weird. I know it's nice you're playing against your old club, but has Deli Ali ever played for Burnley? I find it weird him not celebrating a goal. Um, anyway, maybe I'm just reading into that, but take away for Burnley, the top. Robbie Brady was unbelievable. He was man of the match yesterday. He had chances and chances, and he put in one of the goal, one of the assists of the season. Unbelievable ball. The man who they spent 15 million on, and Chris Wood, who is on. You heard watch from Champions League. He does score goals, but he may not be that level, but he may get better. Unbelievable finish from Chris Wood. One one. Topham have problems at Wembley again. I don't know what it is. For me, people say Wembley is a hoodoo. Hey, you're playing at Wembley. How the hell can you struggle at Wembley? And I'm telling you right now, it's because of other teams, like the like, like, like Burnleys, you know, West Browns, uh, Huddersfields, going there this season are going to be difficult for them because they're going to be up for it. We're playing at Wembley, man. We're playing at Wembley. Burnley, West Boston, they played at Wembley, probably since the playoff final, they got to the Premier League. And then, you know, for me, Burnley, you know, take away Burnley, great performance, but Tottenham, if they're going to win the league this season, they have to, to get their home form massively up because this could be a struggle to even get in top four. Swansea, humiliate Crystal Palace 2 0. And Crystal Palace supporters are absolutely fuming with uh, with um, their new manager, De Boer. And I actually feel sorry for Frank De Boer because A, he's never played in the Premier League, he's never managed in the Premier League, he doesn't know the Premier League. Give the guy a chance. You know, I get it, you know, they were prayer, they were prayer. And they miss Wolf of Zaha. Wolf of Zaha is a massive miss to any team. If you have any quality in your team, you're going to miss him. But Townsend and Benteke, you're too vocal, man. Should do better. I mean, Benteke, he frustrates me so much. I mean, put the ball in the box, he headed it. Dad, what happened to that? You know, I, I think, but they want to try to play the Ajax way. Forget the Ajax way. They need to play the Crystal Palace way. And the Crystal Palace way is a way to play under Ma Sam Aldis. Because they don't have the players to play the Ajax way. They don't have the creativity players. They may have Kabai, but that's about it. But Kabai is coming to the end of his career. But I'm telling you right now, Till and White's ones are amazing. I'm really happy for Abraham because I watched him in the championship. He's a good player. He needs. I still think he should stay at Chelsea for another season, but could also have won Swansea. And yeah, good finish, good goal, but freaking hell, man. The second goal, I was only where I could say it's Kelly again. What is he doing? 
I mean, for goodness sake, but take a touch. No, I just do that. And then the goalkeeper, I question has the old time. I don't think he's a good goalkeeper. I, I, yeah, he may perform for Wales, but he doesn't perform for Palace. I don't know what it is. But anyway, Swansea deserved their win too. Now, they're now playing and on top of the table after four points from, from three games. That's not a bad start. I know they played Manchester United fast for now, but hey, my name right now, they're fucking destroying every team right now. But anyway, um, Palace, big problems. And they need to sort them out. A lot like West Ham, they could be in a relegation fight this season if they don't sort their defence out. And the last two games, West Brom and Stoke, which funny spawn a piece on the same this game other than Peter Crouch scores yet another header. He just loves scoring headers. And also Jerry Regas, happy for him to get that goal for West Brom. And the last game was Watford versus Brighton. Nothing saying this game other than Brittos made the worst challenge I've ever seen. I mean, did you even call it a challenge? It was like a freaking... Unbelievable. That wasn't a challenge, I don't know what that was. That was an assault I would use. But anyway, um, no one says game, Lockhart had a chance at the post. It wasn't it wasn't a great game. 1-1 one, one, and no no was back to leave those Alright guys, okay, let's look at the Premier League table where Manchester United top the league with nine points. Liverpool are second or seven, Huddersfield are third, Man City, West Brom, Chelsea, Watford, Southampton top and the Burnley right at the top ten. Bottom, West Ham, rock bottom. 20th, Palace, Bournemouth, Brighton, Arsenal, Leicester, Newcastle, Swansea, Everton, and Stoke. That is your Premier League week three this season. Now, guys, let's move on to the Bundesliga. And in the Bundesliga, Dortmund keep winning. Two wins in a row right now. Abamian can't stop scoring. And also, Sahin get the second goal. Good win for them. Wasn't a great performance for Hertha. Hertha were really at the, at the game. But, good win for Dortmund, two wins from two, and no goals conceded. Well, they match just United. Bayern Munich went away from home, away to Werther Bremen, two, win, two goals again from Lewandowski, who scores the goals. And our win for them, which brings them second on the table, behind Dortmund on goal difference. Werther Bremen are bottom of the league. Red Bull Leipzig get a 4-1 win against Freiburg. Well, they were very poor against Schalke, but Schalke played really well um, against Red Bull Leipzig last week. This week, RB Leipzig played phenomenal. Theo Werner scored two cracking goals, and he looks a real player. And I said to him, the car, I said to him, he would be in the journey team. I think some Premier League clubs should buy him. But why not leave? Right? Why would you leave RB Leipzig? They're in the Champions League, and they're, you know, going to be fighting for the top three this season. Hot, uh, Freiburg didn't play well. They obviously Europa League is going to be a big hindrance for them this season. And they're going to struggle. Then we go into 2-2 against Hoffenheim. Hoffenheim who didn't qualify for the Champions League midweek. And they're now in the Europa League. And Leverkusen, they needed a result. I actually thought they played really well against Bar Bayern Munich uh, last week. They just lack quality. We give credit to the new signing, um, Bailly, Bailly, whatever his name is. Scored a really good goal. And yeah, 2-2. Both teams get some points. Stuttgart get their first win back in the Bundesliga after one that win against Mainz. Mainz are going to be going to be a real struggle fest in the season. Stuttgart, good for them. I hope we, we hope they stay up this season. And also, another new team here is flying right now, or Hanover. They beat Schalke 1-0. And man, two wins from two for them. Mad, they're having a, they're doing a, a Hoffenheim. They're not, they could do one second. They're doing a whole state of Bundesliga. Man, amazing to see the least. But Mainz, no. Schalke, bad day the office, really. and also got a man sent off in that game, so not really going well so far for Schalke. I know they won last week, but they were very lucky to actually beat RB Leipzig last week. So guys, let's look at the Bundesliga table, where Dortmund top it, Bayern are second. Hamburg, what a win they had this weekend. Great additions to them, good win for them. They're third, Hanover fourth, Club back are fifth, Hoffenheim, RB Leipzig, Schalke, Hertha, and Stuttgart are in the top ten. The bottom, Werder the bottom, Cologne, Mainz. Freiburg, Leverkusen, Bar Leverkusen, Frankfurt, Augsburg, and Wolfsburg get their first win of the season. Good win for them to get some points on the board. Yeah. That's how the league table looks after two games in the Bundesliga. Now, guys, we move on to La Liga. And in La Liga this weekend, Real Madrid drew. 2-2 against Valencia, and Valencia were winning this game 1-0, I think they are actually winning this game twice, but they had 1-0 up through Solar, yeah, no choice point, there's a player called Solar, and Asensio scored him a phenomenal goal, he looked like a real player for the future, a real, real player, 
And yeah, then Raymond, I think Raymond did, I don't know who scored the second goal, but yeah, I've scored the second goal. Um, I think I think Raymond did miss the second goal, I don't know who scored it. But yeah, 2-2, two, two, it wasn't, a, I didn't see it played really well, they deserved a point from the game, but they could have took all three points from the match. Real Madrid weren't really at it. Real Madrid, they, I know it's gonna be, every team can have one of those days when you're playing well, but Valencia deserved a point, Real Madrid just one of those days. Man. Barcelona beat Alves 2-0. Welcome to say this game, other than Barcelona, again, without Messi, they are really fucked, aren't they? I know Suarez didn't play because he's, he's injured and I'm also keeping back after the international break, but my oh my, if they don't, I know they bought them belly, they need a great midfielder or they're not going anywhere, or they're not even close. I know they're right now they want two, one, two from two, but mate, you could ask for two easier games and Alves and Real Betis for goodness sake. So, yeah, they need more quality unless they're not, I think they could even finish third this season. But yeah, a good win for Barcelona. Alves didn't really show anything really. Lego Madrid win 5-1 against Las Palmas. Not to say this game other than Las Palmas were poor defensively. And uh, yeah, Lego Madrid got some quality. I know Griezmann was suspended, but they got Vitolo now, who scored a really good goal. They've also got the likes of um, Koke, who scored an unbelievable bicycle kick goal, and also scored a really good second goal. So he, scored, he scored two goals in the game. He looks like a player this season, you know, trying to step out of Griezmann's shadow, you know, trying, okay. When Griezmann's on here, I want to be the main man of the team. So yeah, five one win didn't flatter him. Did, actually, it didn't really flatter let him really, It could have been six or seven. But yeah, good win for them. To get points on the board, four points from them now. Good start to the season. Let it go, Madrid. And Sevilla beat Getafe one 0 Wasn't a great game. Deserved a draw. Getafe were robbed of a point really. And yeah, Sevilla like like let it go, Madrid. Four points on the board. From two games. Two guys up in the La Liga table were real saucy at the top it after they thumped very out free you know? Good win for them. They look like a team this season. Second goes to Barcelona. Leganes got a win this weekend too. They are third. Letting them draw the fourth. Real Madrid. Granola. Granola. Very cool team. Levante. Sevilla. Valencia. Sevilla. Alego Bavar at the top 10. The bottom. Las Palmas, Villarreal, Alves, Malaga, Santo Vigo, Deportivo, Guertafi, Espanol, Real Betis, and Elbor. There's your La Liga table after two games. Let's move on to Serie A. And Serie A this weekend, the big game was between Inter Milan and Roma. Inter Milan win again. Man, and Icardi can't stop scoring again. Two goals for him. Man, he is literally lighting up Serie A this season so far. But yeah, for Omar actually winning this game from a really good finish from the, from the guy who scored the goal. Then it was like caddy time. Two cracking finishes. The first one, oh man, he finished that with well so proud and tell you that. The second goal was a really good goal. And then a really good finish from the guy from Inter Milan. But yeah, 3 1 win. But Roma, again, I know it's a new manager and it's a big, big club he took from Little Sassuolo to big, big Roma. Fuck me, he's under a bit of pressure at the minute. I know it's a little tiny, tiny bit of pressure, but yeah, I mean, to be one up against Inter Milan for 70 minutes and then you reach the three goals at the end of the match, not a great sort of way to kick your first home game, but hey, great way for Inter Milan. Spalletti is really doing wonders with that team. I thought Borja Valero looks a really good signing for Fiorentina. He's got so much creativity, he can put in a pass, he can defend. He, he's going to be a really good sign for Inter this season. Good win for Inter Milan, 3-1 win. They're flying. Juventus also make a 2 wins from 2 after they beat Genoa 4-2. A couple of goals from Dybala. Well, what can you do really? Actually, put on, Genoa actually played really well in this game. It actually should be got a point, but the class of Juventus showed. Batui had a really good game for his debut. And he looks a decent signing from uh, Paris Saint-Germain, really surprised PSG actually sold them really. But yeah, good win for Juventus, two wins from two. Napoli won 3-1 against Atlanta. Atlanta were winning this game, apart from an absolute lack of goal from out of nowhere. From one of the Napoli players, he put that in. Unbelievable volley in the top freaking corner. You're already saving that, mate. And a couple of goals from the other Napoli players. Good win for Napoli, 3-1 win, and they, along with Inter Milan and Juventus make it two wins from two. AC Milan also make it two wins from two after beating Calgary, but it wasn't a full come conclusion for them because they won up in this game. But Calgary got to go back and then a fucking amazing free kick that David Beckham will be proud of. Sat Susu, what a freaking goal from Susu. 
The free kick was sensational. Your goalkeeper didn't have a chance of saving them. Good win for AC Milan. 2 1 win. And they joined everybody else who's won six, like I said, who've got six, six, two wins from two, six points from six. And last game, Lazio beat uh, Geno, Chievo, the flying donkeys, weren't flying this game. But yeah, good win for Lazio. Get some points on the board and get the momentum going before. Uh, just, just before the international break. So guys, let's look at the Serie A team. Juventus took it, Inter Milan are second, Roma, sorry, Napoli are third, then it's AC Milan, then Sampdoria, Torino, Spla, Lazio, Bologna, Chievo are at the top 10, the bottom, Fiorentina, not a great start for them. Two defeats in two. Big problems, that's Fiorentina. Calgary, Atlanta, Benefitano, um, Udinese, San Sassuolo, Cotone, Verona, Genoa, and Roma. That is your Serie A for week two of the season. Now we move on to League Earn. And in League Earn, the big game is Monaco thumped. Monaco thumped. That's the word I would use. Thumped. Marseille, 6-1. i tell you one thing, you don't need Mbappe when you've got probably right now the most informed striker in the in Europe, in Ramon Falcao. He looks like the Letico Madrid striker right now. Man, he is scoring. He looks fitter, he looks stronger, he looks leaner. He looks he literally looks like the guy who was a Letico Madrid. If he was like that, bro, if Manchester United put him at Falcao right now, phew. And then even Chelsea went to he went to Chelsea. He just he just didn't look fit. He didn't look fit. And tell you one thing, he looked Monaco smashed the goal. He scored two cracking goals. The penalty one was a really good penalty, and the header was a great header. Even though the man of the match for me was Lopez for Monaco. He was sensational. He scored. He got a couple of assists in this game, and actually should score goal himself. But um, Glick scored the first goal. Farkas scored the penalty. Farkas scored again from the header. And then the fourth goal from one of the uh, Monaco players. Second half didn't end 5 1. It was 5 0. Um, I forget who scored the fifth goal. But then the sixth, but then Cabela came on, got on a goal. It was just really a consolation, really. He looks like he looks like serpent, serpent to requirements at Marseille. And then a great head, downing header from Sadibi made the sixth one. It's not, the fact of the matter is, it could have been eight, it could have been nine, it could have been a rugby score. Monaco looked the real deal. Even though, even though they didn't have Mbappe was on the bench for goodness sake, and they still look great. Only that's amazing, isn't it? Your top goal scorer last season and Mbappe, nah, I don't need him. Nah, you can go to Paris Saint Germain. We're doing alright. Astonishing. It's astonishing. Four wins from four, they're flying. Paris Saint Germain beats Saint Etienne 3 0. And wow, good lord, I tell you one thing, you talk about Monaco playing lots. Paris Saint Germain's football is unwatchable at times. Goodness me, Neymar is just making that league look so easy. It's incredible. And great win for them. I can't, I, I, Cavani is literally coming right now. Him and Varkow is right now. Who's between him and who's going to get the golden boot this season in Ligue 1? Those two are smashing it right now. I, and I think ever since Neymar's came in, I think it's made Cavani a better striker. You know, he's saying, okay, I'm playing, with, I'm playing with one of the best players in the world. I need to up my game. And he's upped his game. Two goals against Saint Etienne. And our goal from, the, from the, one of the Paris Saint Germain players. But they are looking well right now. Monaco and PSG, both top of the league with 12 points. They're smashing them. And it's just the best of us, really. Uh, that's Drew no no against Lyon. Lyon now draw two games in two. And yeah, like I said, they always start the season well. And then the wheels come off. Like last season. And I hope it doesn't harm for Lyon this season because I want them to do well this season. I want I want someone all the Monaco and Paris Saint Germain to at least fight for the title of the season. And I thought it would have been Lyon, but they need to turn those draws into wins. Good point for Nats and Cardio Ranieri. Bordeaux 2 2 1 1 against Trois 2 1. And Bordeaux, along with Lyon, are actually on their own points. So can Bordeaux be the team can, that can fight Paris Saint Germain and Monaco this season for the title? But give credit where credit is due. Bordeaux, they've got some really good, really good, interesting players in that team. And they keep their team. I've been probably bringing in some additions. They bought in Yaya Sinogo from Arsenal, so we know from Ballon. But they could actually be like a really good team this season, Bordeaux. I really hope they do. They haven't won the league in 2008, which is actually 10 years ago to the day. 10 years ago since they won it. This could be their season. And Nice lose again against newly promoted men who have never had a goal so far in the league and they put three past him. 
Big problems in Nice. Didn't qualify for the Champions League. One of their players, Suri, Suri, looks like he's not happy there. He wants to go to Barcelona. They've had bust ups with Balotelli. Balotelli isn't happy with Schneider because he signed. It's all going hell loose at Nice right now. Big problems. Yeah, and we only played four games. Unbelievable. So, guys, let's look at the league and table where PSG top up with 12. Monaco joined them on 12 points. Then it's Netian, who lost but still third. Leon are fourth, Bordeaux are fifth, Marseille who lost dropped down to sixth, Alger stay in seventh, Cannes up to eighth, Cannes up to ninth, Toulouse up to tenth, and the bottom, Mets are rock bottom, no points, and yeah, the only team in the league are not have a point yet, so. Montpellier, Troyes, and Toulouse round out the bottom ten, and that is Ligue 1 after four games. That's the end of the football impact for this episode. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Say no to drugs, be yourself, be happy, be amazing. Please like, subscribe, and that's your own. Peace out.